Hello everyone and welcome to installing Realism Overhaul in Kerbal Space Program. While the current versions of Kerbal Space Program that Realism Overhaul is suited for are 1.1.3 or 1.2.2, this is basically how I've been installing Realism Overhaul, the Realism Overhaul set of mods in Kerbal Space Program for quite a while now. Uh, you will note that I'm not going to be showing how to use CCAN, which is a more automat automated installer because not all the mods support it and also it doesn't really give you a feel for what all the mods are doing and so when you need to troubleshoot which often happens with realism overhaul you won't know what's going wrong so we're going to go through it step by step and show you what each of the mods do and so first of all we need to talk about what realism overhaul does realism overhaul is a set of mods that turns Kerbal Space Program into a somewhat more rigorous simulation the particular changes that are made are that the engines have real sizes and performance values and use real fuels, not just liquid fuel and oxidizer. So fuels like kerosene, hydrogen, and the things that real rockets use. Most of them have limited ignitions and suffer from ullage. Ullage is the need to sell the fuel down in order to ignite the engines. We'll talk about that more in a subsequent video where I build a rocket for you and show you how to build a rocket in Realism Overhaul. For now, let's just install the mods. Um, pods are as large as their real-life counterparts, so normally they're scaled by about 1.6 times because the default pods are about 1.6 times smaller than the real pods, like Apollo's command module. Propellant tanks have their correct dry mass ratios. That will help you a lot, actually. Um, the, re the propellant tanks in the stock uh, Kerbal Space Program are actually very, very heavy and limit your ability to get delta V from them. So this, this correction will actually help you get a lot more delta V from your rockets, which will be necessary because we will be building rockets for the real solar system, which is big. It's about 11 times bigger than the Kerbal system. So we have to get more delta V to get around. Solar panels don't produce massive amounts of energy, but they are lighter. Similarly, reaction wheels aren't magically powerful anymore. That's really important. Uh, a lot of what you can get away with in stock Kerbal Space Program won't work in Realism Overhaul, primarily for this reason. This is probably the most significant. Uh, in a way, a lot of it seems very complicated, but as far as actually building craft and making them work go, uh, the fact that you can't rely on reaction wheels is probably the most significant change. Uh, we'll get to that, uh, but let's just install the mods. What we see here on the forum thread, and I'll link this in the video description, is that there are certain dependencies, some recommendations, and some suggestions. What I would suggest is that first you get the dependencies working, with one exception, real solar system. It's, um, it's possible to use realism overhaul without real solar system and use it for a different system. If you would like, for instance, you could use it with the Galileo Planet Pack at 10x, which would be about the same thing, but a different set of planets. But uh, So you could have a different planet pack or just try and use it with the Kerbin and the Kerbal system, though it would be quite overpowered for that. Uh, so, yeah, I do recommend just uh, installing either real solar system or some other planet pack that uh, sizes planets to a realistic size, uh, which is about 10 times or 11 times the size of Kerbin. So, the first thing we want to do is actually uh, have an installation of Kerbal Space Program. This is my SSD with all my Kerbal installs, and you can see I've done this a lot. Uh, so, I'm going to create a new folder. Now, if you... So, we'll call it test, I think is fair to say. Um, if you have it on Steam, you want to create a copy of your Steam installation, do not try and mod your actual Steam installation. Here, I purchased it off of the Kerbal Space Program website. Uh, so what you do in that case is you get a zip like this. And you can see I'm going to go with uh, Kerbal Space Program, the 64-bit version, and 1.2.2. And so I'm just going to copy this, unzip. And so what you end up with is a completely clean install of Kerbal Space Program. No save files, no nothing. Uh, one thing I would do is copy the settings file from another install so that you don't have to redo your settings especially if you have a controller set up or something like that so we have a settings file okay so we have this page which has uh, the required mods also uh, another page I will link in the video description is the realism overhaul github which is where they post the most up-to-date stuff 
And you do not have to immediately update realism overhaul every time. Uh, uh, see, it says update 11 hours ago. You don't have to update it every 11 hours. Um, in fact, once you have a stable install of realism overhaul, probably just go with it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it's probably safer. Uh, uh, test new updates off to the side and don't mess with your realism overhaul install unless you're sure that the updates are not going to destroy everything. Uh, so you can always, uh, once again, create a new test folder and put the updates in and make sure everything is working all right before you update your mods. It's just safer that way, especially if you're doing something long term like a huge career mode and you want to do it for a long period of time, try to cover decades of space flight or something like that. Um, better to uh, be careful. So that's the GitHub. Another page that I will link is the spreadsheet with the links to the GitHub pages. I mean, you can go just through here, uh, but this is much better organized and it will show you what exactly um, you need. These are the required mods up here and these are the suggested mods down here, except for realism overhaul, which you actually do require. Note that CCAN um, it's it's not always available for CCAN, yeah. Deadly reentry is not on CCAN, and stuff like that. Re Realism overhaul, the pre-release for 1.2.2 is not on CCAN yet. So let's just go through. The first one I would recommend that you install is Ferrum Aerospace. Now uh, I also want to start off with this one because it's sort of a complicated situation for 1.2.2. A little bit easier for 1.1.3. So here, Ferrum Aerospace is only uh, ready for 1.1.3, technically, but it has a dev build for 1.2.2 because, as with all the other mods, it's being updated very quickly. Let's talk about what it does. It changes the aerodynamics of the game to make it more realistic. It is shape-based, vessel-centered aerodynamics, which means that some of the hijinks you get away with in Kerbal Space Program as far as aerodynamics uh, do not work here. So if it seems like it ought not to work in real life, uh, fair mirror says will help correct that. Uh, so emergent fairings and cargo bays using a voxel model method uh, allows for the actual shape of the vehicle to play a role in how lift and drags are, are applied. Wing effects, stall, mock effects, body lift, uh, so actually if you just want to use fair mirror space in stock to get more realistic aerodynamics that would be totally cool. I mean, uh, that, that would be a good idea, especially if you're into making airplanes. Uh, so very much recommended for that. But here we only have a 1.1.3 1. 1. Uh, compatible version of Fair Aerospace. So that's not going to be good for us in 1.2.2. In order to install for 1.2.2, and this is the most complicated thing that uh, you're going to have to deal with when installing Kerbal Space Program in 1.2.2, um, hold on, I'm clicking all over the place, but what I really want is branches, KSP update here. So if you go to the Ferrum Aerospace thing, click branches, KSP update, make sure you're in the update branch. You can see it's been, uh, this folder has been updated 24 days ago. I'm going to download the zip. I'm actually not going to really download the zip because I already have it. You can see I have, I have, I tried to make things very, uh, very organized, so I see Kerbal Mods for 1-2 really because I didn't want to put a point there but I already have this but heck I can get the most uh, late, latest version anyway so let me download it and it's a very small file okay and that's what it looks like there and we get our test folder we see a game data folder here and we see a game data folder here and we take this and we drop it there and there you go, that's Ferrum Aerospace for 1.2.2. Okay, the next one I want is Advanced Jet Engines. So let's go, we can just click that, or maybe not. Let's just go to the thread. It's actually good to go to the threads to see what warnings they might have. And also I can just read out what the, what the mod does. Advanced Jet Engines gives jets, propellers, and rotors realistic performance in KSP. Okay, and so you're going to get real-world jet engines, uh, thermodynamic equations are used to calculate jet performance, real throttle, overheat, and uh, engine intake area, right? So it makes that all realistic. So let's go to the GitHub for that. And it's ready for 1.2.2, so I'm just going to download that. And that one is actually more advanced than the copy I already have, so that's nice. 
So game, game data folder, game data folder. And we have a lot of stuff in here, including module manager. That's fine. Let's just copy all of that. And there we go. We are ready. So next mod. Now, whether we look here or look here, the next mod is KGR, which is Kerbal Joint Reinforcement, which is basically a sophisticated form of auto strutting before auto strutting was a thing in the Kerbal Space Program. Um, it'll automate the whole auto strutting thing, and uh, that was very important for the larger rockets that we use in Realism Overhaul. Uh, that's probably not the best link. So here, this is why this is a good place. Let's see. Uh, there we go. Kerbal Joint Reinforcement Master. So we can just download it like that. I'll uh, replace that version. And again, it's a very small file. And again, we look in the game data folder. And we take what's in the game data folder and put it in ours. And yes, obviously, CCAN will be much quicker. But again, uh, not all the mods are happy with that. And it's again also good to visit the pages to make sure that there aren't any warnings about updating particular to uh, from particular versions to other particular versions. Uh, real shoots, we've got module manager already that was unzipped with uh, advanced jet engines. Module uh, real shoots makes realistic parachutes, obviously. Um, the stock parachutes used to be not as realistic as they are now with the deployment. It used to be that you could deploy them in unrealistic times and real shoots but real shoots has another functionality in that it helps you gauge how much parachute you need for a particular job on a particular planet um, so it also has gradual deployment so it's not a sudden g-force um, uh, it, it tells you about deployment conditions parachutes uh, will not auto cut upon nearly stopping midair or touching the ground of course that's been improved in the stock game as well full customization, etc. It makes it easier, I mean, uh, it makes it in a way more complicated uh, to use parachutes, but it also makes it easier to use parachutes reliably. Because after you go through an entire mission to Venus, and you need to make sure that your parachutes work, um, you don't want to be caught off guard and have to start the whole thing over again. So, it's nice to have the dialogue in the, in the VAB to tell you about it. So, real shoot, removed FAR support. Um, it's not necessary to use FAR's methods to get the density. Okay, that, 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 that's not a problem. That just means that it wasn't required to have FAR support, which is good because if you want to use real shoots in the stocking without FAR, you can do that. Okay, and the same idea, game data folder, real shoot, unzip. The next mod is one of the more defining mods of Realism Overhaul. It's uh, uh, probably the most essential one as far as I could tell ex uh, except for realism overall itself and real solar system and that is real fuels real fuels as it states on the cover uh, changes the liquid fuel and oxidizer to be the real fuels and as this line noted propelled tanks have the correct dry mass ratios it does that as well those are its two functions so um, it uh, it'll just say here Converts resources to use one unit equals one liter. So you know the normal units that we are used to in Kerbal Space Program? Well, now they're equivalent to liters. Um, real world fuels are added. Engines or RCS can use them. Uh, but you need an engine pack in order for engines or RCS to use the new fuels. So if you put real fuels in, but you don't put in something to change the engines, the engines are still going to use liquid fuel and oxidizer. Real fuels doesn't do that. Okay, uh, the mod that does do that, that changes all the engines to use real fuels, is Realism Overhaul. That's the mod that changes the engines. Okay, so if you put real fuels in but don't put Realism Overhaul, don't be surprised in that uh, you have liquid fuel and oxidizer engines. Um, engines in RCS can have multiple configurations, have tech levels, uh, that's all for career mode kind of thing. And engines can be subject to ullage requirements. Again, you have to settle the fuel down in order to uh, light the engine in some cases. We'll talk about that when I do the video on building rockets. Engines can have limited throttling. Okay, that's an important feature. And that's all built into the plug-in part of this. Okay, so let's download this. 
Obviously, it'll be very, very, very essential to the realism aspect of all this. And I'll just replace the one I've got there. Okay, and game data, we see a bunch of this stuff. Uh, solver engines we already have in, uh, it's not necessary to overwrite it. Uh, all the versions should be in sync. So if you want to, you can also overwrite. Let me decide for each file. Uh, you can see that uh, the versions, well, this version is somewhat more updated than that version. But uh, if we take a look at the most essential part, which is the DLL file, that's the actual plugin, they're the same size. Uh, it seems like this version is about a week ahead, so we'll go with this one. So the next one up is real heat, and that, that that's actually uh, just a tweak on the stock heating. Um, back in the day, uh, Delhi Reentry handled the heating, and that's because the stocking didn't have reentry heating. And uh, real heat just tweaks the reentry heating a little bit now uh, to make sure that it works for Earth as it should, or for any planet as it should, and it uses equations to do that. Okay. So we'll have real heat. It's a very, very tiny thing. You can see um, just uh, 69 kilobytes. And it also comes with this module flight integrator. Okay, uh, it doesn't have actually the game data folder in there. So, but anyway, that's what you need. Okay. Next up, real plume. Um, since Real Plume requires smokescreen, see so you can see download the latest Real Plume, download the latest smokescreen, and of course it requires module manager as well. I think um, I would recommend just installing smokescreen first because smokescreen doesn't require Real Plume. So make sure to install the thing that is required first. So smokescreen. And that's going to give you better smoke effects, better exhaust effects. Um, it's just a plugin, so you need configurations to create those exhaust effects, and Real Plumes has those configurations. Uh, so we're going to download the latest Real Plume so that we have nice plumes on our engines. And you can see it's a much larger download, it's 24 megabytes because it, it has effects added in. Okay, real plume in. All right, so real plume done. And that leaves us with uh, module flight integrator, which we already have because we got it from one of the other mods. So we've got the whole list. Everything is in. The last thing, as I said, real solar system. Sort of in bold here uh, as, a, as a strong recommendation. Um, I'll, I'll discuss each of these in turn, but let's just do real solar system because uh, all the changes we've made, um, you, you could, again, use like a 10x Kerbal system would be just fine, but if you try and do uh, use what we've done in the default Kerbin system, um, that's way too easy. So here we have real solar system for 1.2.2, and this importantly is not all that this is not the end of the story uh, so you've got real solar system but you don't have any textures see it says here see textures above for the other downloads okay uh, download plugin by kicking uh, by kicking by clicking here I certify I've read and will follow the install installation instructions above um, texture installation <laughs> very important you can get the textures from the texture repository okay you get three possibilities for your textures. Uh, you get a, a low res, a mid res, and a high res. You can see it's a, a big difference, 70 megabytes, 213 megabytes, or 490 megabytes. Myself, I actually use a mix. I use Earth, Moon, and Mars textures from the high res pack, and then I use the mid res pack for everything else. It'll depend on your system. Okay, and these also contain biome maps. So you can see added new Pluto and Charon uh, biomes. So you want to get those as well. But uh, you might not want to get into mixing and matching it unless you know what you're doing. Uh, you should pick the pack that's best for your system. 
uh, start with the first pack maybe and if everything seems to be going well you can upgrade uh, judge for yourself but um, yeah I mean at this point with 64-bit KSP and if you have a decent system you should be able to run the high-res pack um, it used to be uh, these low-res ones used to be more important when we were stuck in 32-bit okay so we've got RSS let's get that first so what real solar system does is it uh, uses Copernicus which is included to change the the entire solar system and you can get other planet packs for Copernicus please don't use one of those planet packs while also using real solar system that would be bad uh, we, we will copy this module modular flight integrator as well um, module manager is the same version we have here okay uh, let me decide it looks like the version in game data is more updated than the version here so I'll go with that I'm not sure why an uh, outdated version is included in real solar system but that's probably because some of the other mods have been updated more recently again um, it shouldn't cause a huge problem but it's always nice to have the most updated one when you're building your install for the first time so you don't have to update then later on okay uh, I already have textures um, I can I mean you can sort it out for yourself I'll just use maybe maybe it's more realistic if I uh, download one of these packs and just install them straight out hmm yeah okay uh, why not it'll take some time but I'll download the high-res pack and just install it straight out for you guys it's worth noticing that these textures haven't been updated since March 14 2016 so you can really just copy them from install to install that shouldn't be a problem once you have the mix of textures that you want so this is the 8192 pack the high-res pack game data RSS textures drop so then we ask ourselves is there anything else that is strictly necessary for realism overhaul now you want more engine parts because right now all you have is the stock parts uh, none of these things adds parts per se AJE does modify the engines uh, the stock jet engines and adds more of them it duplicates the stock engines to create more engines uh, but otherwise right now you don't have any new parts and that is severely limiting as we will see um, but looking down the list uh, real solar system RSS textures very good B9 procedural wings will give you tweakable wings. Uh, they're procedural wings so you can shape them any way you like. That's rather important because the stock wings are very limiting and especially if you're trying to do realistic planes of course you want to shape the wings as you like. Also um, they allow for different uh, heat tolerances. So for the B9 procedural wings you get three varieties. You'll get like subsonic, supersonic and then space plane wings. So you might want that. Uh, each of those has different heat tolerances. Connecting living space, I almost never use, personally. Deadly reentry now basically only handles G-forces, and that was more important before the implementation of G-forces in Kerbal Space Program by default, which occurred in 1.2.2. I'm not actually sh I think uh, deadly reentry right now does modify heat shields to help you out, uh, gives you some better heat shields perhaps, but that's about it. Um, I don't recall it doing anything else. I don't use filter extensions myself. Hanger extender lets you have a bigger hanger. Uh, well, actually, it eliminates the VAB so that you can build a bigger rocket. It used to just make the VAB bigger, but that functionality no longer works. Um, you don't, strictly speaking, need automatic version checker unless you want it. MechJeb is a dev build. And uh, for my own sanity, I'm going to install MechJeb right now because uh, that will be helpful for the building of the rocket okay uh, so yeah let's let's do that and it seems like there's a newer version available than what I had before procedural fairings you will want but I won't put it in right now not not on the testing to see whether our install works part uh, procedural fairings for everything I do not use procedural parts will give you more flexible tanks just like you can get more flexible wings there and uh, that will be helpful as I'll show you. R RCS build aid is self-explanatory. 
Um, not required, but it is up to you whether you want it or not. Remote tech gives you more realistic communication network systems. And uh, that was more important before the implementation of uh, communications in stock, though uh, the stock antennae may not be sized properly for a real solar system. And remote tech will help you get a, a more sophisticated uh, relay system underway. If you really want a sophisticated uh, need for a satellite network, remote tech is where you go. Also, remote tech uh, provides signal delay, which means that uh, it take light takes time to go from planet to planet, so there is a delay in your commands when you try and command your probes. Uh, satur saturatable reaction wheels, I've had problems with, uh, so I don't use. Tack life support, I always use. So I consider that more or less part of realism overhaul really rescue me okay um, uh, okay so that that's required persistent rotation I recommend these days um, I didn't used to use it but that that keeps your craft rotating as it was um, when under time warp but also it has a functionality where it'll automatically orient you to the sun during time warp so you don't lose electric charge on the long time warps so I think most people will find that very helpful okay I have the latest version so we've got a couple of mods here let's make sure we do that MechJeb MechJeb doesn't have the game data folder you just unzip this folder here Tag light support game data just get all these things no need for module manager we already have it and these seem to be the more updated files so we'll keep those that's from the community resource pack which a lot of different mods have and persistent rotation game data don't be fooled do not uh, like unzip this into your folder you want to find see if there's a game data folder first and there is, and then unzip that. Okay. Community resource pack we have, community category kit we have, and finally, realism overhaul itself, which again, modifies the engines. So uh, unless you have this, you're not gonna have, uh, especially two things. One, the engines that use the real fuels, and two, engine ignitions. And it also has the configuration for ullage, which engines need it and which ones don't. But uh, engine ignitions are configured on the engine configurations in Realism Overhaul. So if you don't have Realism Overhaul, you won't have the engine ignition uh, functionality. So game data folder, engine group, con 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 sorry. engine group controller lets you set engine groups so that you can control the engines separately. So not all with the same throttle. So that's actually just straight up helpful. So at this point, don't do anything more. I mean, this is already a lot. This is already a lot for Kerbal to handle. Let's run this and see whether it works. In fact, it might be advisable to do a test run after you do these required mods before you do anything else. Uh, it should run with those required mods even without Realism Overhaul. Um, at any stage, you should be able to run your program and see whether it works. This is definitely a time to check whether it works. This here is the transition between the regular loading and module manager loading. Module manager uh, patches parts. And so when you finally get all the parts that you want, uh, Realism Overhaul will modify the parts and all these mods will modify the parts uh, using module manager. That's why you need module manager. It allows all the parts to be modified in a standardized and relatively easy to understand manner. If there's any interest, I can talk about how the parts are modified in the configuration files, just in case you want to do some of that yourself. I've sort of thought of making a chocolate engine. Well, okay, chocolate liqueur engine. You, it's possible. It's not very good, but it's possible. Okay, let's start a new game. We can already see that we have the proper Earth there. That's the west coast of California right there. My home state. Um, let's do sandbox. Uh, technically, we don't have the career setup here, 
because the default career mode won't work very well for real solar system what you need is a mod called realistic progression zero which provides a career mode for real solar system but we're not going to install that right now let's just check that real realism overhaul works as we have it right now without anything else okay tag light support settings are now available in the ksp settings difficulty options window good to know welcome to the space center and uh, well we seem to have a place here nothing has crashed yet it might be advisable to do all sorts of uh, visual modifications you could get clouds of course we don't have clouds right now we don't have any visual enhancements I'll talk about doing that in the same video that I talk about adding more parts but let's take a look at what we have in the VAB and most of the parts should look very familiar right now let's take a look at how they've changed well we've got a life support module here the data transmitter is the stock one we don't have remote tech in here yet but you'll note this modular fuel tank that's real fuels and so it gives you the option of all these fuels don't worry about that <laughs> don't worry about that too much right now um, tack generic converter which will uh, convert the carbon dioxide to uh, oh uh, apparently water and waste okay so that's all tack light support that's all this is all tack light support stuff so that it comes with some food water and oxygen for your crew and uh, well here is the mark 4 command pod it's larger than it used to be because it's sized to match the Apollo command pod it's 4 meters now not 2.5 meters okay and it's got a lifting surface that's nice and also it's got real fuel space it's got an RCS you'll notice the RCS has uh, 0.44 kilonewtons which is a more realistic well I mean there's a whole range of possibilities but it is good for a pod like this and the ISPs are realistic for these fuels though um, you could upgrade them uh, let's not go into too many details uh, I will talk about building a rocket in the next episode our fuel tanks are not the right size right now this is a 4 meter tank and this is a 3.75 meter I mean sorry a 4 meter pod and a 3.75 meter tank so that's a bit of a problem and th that leads us to uh, procedural parts or tweak scale you could also add tweak scale to change the size of this tank to match the pod but procedural parts is generally very important at this point or a mod like SSTU which adds tweakable fuel tanks and then you can resize the fuel tanks in SSTU but the stock tanks are of limited use and then we have the engines which now all have different names and they match real engines so this is the P1 uh, sorry F100 that is on the F15 and F16 so that's the engine on those fighter jets this is the engine on the Saturn 1 and also the RS27 is the engine on the Delta 2 so they're related and you find that out here uh, they're related and you have an option here to switch between them so that you don't have to have too many parts here that's really handy so that if they're related engines or similar engines uh, you can switch between them like this instead of having a new part for every single engine once you've put the part on you can just add the appropriate fuel it gives you the option here and you don't want to scroll down through all this to try and find the right fuels and the right mixtures it gives you the option here the MMHN204 is for the RCS up here so if you want to put more RCS fuel you could do that there but and it increases the amount there but this is the fuel for this engine you can read that off of this area here alright so everything looks to be alright uh, we've got the earth we don't need to save this we'll talk about building rockets in the next episode and if we go here to, to the tracking station we see the earth one thing we don't have is multiple launch sites we'll talk about that later but this is the point where you need to check things out and make sure you can fly a rocket. So let's do that in the next episode. I'll see you there.